What's up guys, it's Damp. I'm back again with a new video talking about lures and in order to get to the lures we have to actually change some of our tackle. So I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about reels and the types of reels and then I'll put down in the notes below if you want to just skip to the part where you learn about casting lures, um, you can do that. Up above is a quick uh, Cliff's Notes version on how you're going to um, catch some bass with your first uh, lure that you're going to get. So to, before we go into that, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit briefly about how you at what level you start casting and casting lures when you can do it what does it look like so at level three you are actually going to get access to buy on the spinning rods uh, the value spin which is 25 bucks keep in mind you want to always buy tackle at your home screen if you can help because it's cheaper um, try not to buy it at the locations that you're traveling to it'll be marked up anyway back on topic the value spin is one you can buy that will work with your current reel setup so to give you kind of a brief rundown on reels, you have spinning reels and you have bait casters. Um, bait casters are a little bit more complex to cast. You can tend to get fouled up a lot more if you're not experienced with them. Spinning rods, or spinning reels rather, are look like this. Um, typically handles on the left side for a right-handed fisherman. And bait casters traditionally... Um, actually would have a handle on the right side so a right-handed person would cast and then switch the rod to the left hand so they can crank with the right hand so uh, spinning reels are mostly what people utilize when you're first starting off and you're trying to get used to it unless you have one of the push button combos like a zebco but anyway back on topic what we're going to talk about is what kind of reel is the most efficient just to get you started and that's going to be a spinning reel because that's what you already have so you can buy, go ahead and buy this um, value spin for 25 bucks if you'd like. Or if you want to take the dive and go into casters, you can do that now. Um, but that would mean you need to buy a different type of rod. Because of the way that this reel is designed, it is designed so that if you look at a casting rod, these rods have this hook on the back, and you actually will have the reel face up at you with a spinning reel that faces down at the ground. So... If you're going to buy a spinning reel, which you can, or a casting reel, which you can, you need to make sure you buy another rod also. So that's a little bit bigger of an investment. Just tip there so you don't waste any money. Um, after you have your rods and reels, you're going to come back to your screen. You actually need to click here in the home and make sure that you drag it back in your inventory. If you're going to use the casting rod or obviously the value spin, um, you can use that one too. And then you want to make sure that you have your reels on then we're gonna go and we're going to find some lures so starting off at level three you have spoons that you can utilize uh, casting spoons slop spoons um, and then you're eventually gonna get to the mini bass jigs which I would recommend once you get to level five but for now it, you can buy any of these just to get started um, at level three it is most efficient and I'll have a new video on how to level quickly it's pretty much most efficient to start catching bass that's where you really want to focus is grind out bass at level three so grab one of the spoons um, for now go ahead and grab one and then what we're gonna do is you're gonna go back to your inventory screen and you're gonna find your spoon and you're gonna throw it on obviously just like that and make sure you put your line on or it won't let you cast and then we're going to go ahead and go to the destination, and I'll give you guys an idea on how you're going to use these. So, first things first, when we're going to travel to the map, look at the weather pattern. That's really important. So what I put in the top left there was, if it's sunny, you want to fish early morning and late evening. If it's overcast, you're going to fish midday. Because we're fishing for largemouth or ambush predators, you always want to look for heavy cover. That's the way they typically feed. They're very rarely open water predators they're usually looking in heavy, hiding in heavy cover and they're looking to ambush either uh, some sort of prey like uh, let's say they did weak fish things like that so um, you can see here if we look at our chart um, this is an overcast day so this is kind of a bug it should say noon but it says 12 a.m. but what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish at we're gonna skip right away and we're gonna fish at noon and then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like and how your retrieve is going to look. But if you've never fished before, um, kind of what you want to be careful with when you're casting lures is keep them out of the weeds. You want to cast them near these reeds or cattails here. 
but don't you don't want to be casting them actually through um, through or into them because you're gonna get snags so what you want to do is cast kind of in between this area um, look right in through here is where you'd want to cast um, and then we're gonna retrieve with what's called a stop and go so the stop and go motion is you're not gonna move your rod you're gonna let your bait sink close to the bottom reel a few times stop let it sink repeat um, once your bait gets picked up you see your line move sideways or you feel a bite either way which you'd see on your meter to the right um, you can hold down right and then reel in um, if you're reeling in and you get some pressure you can right click to alleviate some of that pressure off so we're gonna go ahead and cast and I'll show you what I mean so this is just to kind of show the retrieve initially you can see my baits on the bottom and you really want to keep it away from being at the bottom so I set my reel speed to three um, if you get it on the bottom you're much more likely to get snagged so we're gonna move up we're gonna get our bait up we're gonna let it sink and we're going to reel, and we're going to let it sink, and we're going to reel, and you'll see we get the stop and go that comes up. You want to reel like two to four times in between letting the lure sink. Reel it in, let it sink. And that's kind of the pattern or the, what you're looking for. Um, try not to let it sink on the bottom. It's okay if it hits the bottom, but you don't want to just drag it along the bottom because you're definitely going to get snags that way. So this is kind of how the pattern's going to look. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. There's a lot of different retrieves you can do. Um, and I was told by a beta tester that the number of dots is how appealing the bait looks like to the fish. Um, mean the more accurate your retrieve is or the better it is. We're going to go ahead and fast forward to high noon. We're going to see if we can catch a fish just to show you all. So, same thing. We're going to go look at trying to cast right there in between those reeds. We're going to use our retrieve. Another thing you can do, guys, is you can actually right-click to bring your bait up like that, and it'll bring it up. Um, but what you can see is what happened was we were on the ground, we try to do that, we actually set into a snag. So, we'll give it a few chances, but most of the time I just end up breaking off my line. We're going to go ahead and break it off, and then we'll retie up here, and I'll cast another one. So, tie up, and we're going to try it again. So when you use that right click, be careful when you're doing it because we did it when we were close to the bottom. That meant that we got snagged. But jigging, that's an important technique that we were just doing. And we can show you that with a bass jig in another video. But I have the most success when using it with real speed of three reeling two to three times, maybe two to four times, and then you're, there we go. See that we got a bite. So I set the hook, and we'll bring it in. Little guy. Yank him Bassmaster style onto the deck. There we go. So that's kind of how you do it. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward once you kind of get the hang of it, but a lot of practice. Again, try not to... Uh, Drag your bait along the bottom and try not to jerk like I did on the bottom or you will get hung up. Don't cast into the weed reeds or weeds. Cast right outside of them. And that should hopefully help you with the spoon. The jig's a little bit different. I might make a um, another video on that. But my main advice when using lures, guys, is try and use the highest level lure that you can because it allows you to catch bigger fish. So when you get to level 5, that quarter ounce bass jig, I've been able to catch... 1.8 two pounders you can even I've seen people catch trophies on them so that's good and the idea is with the bass jig is you want to bring it up off the bottom so either right click or bring it up off the bottom because that's a sinking bait that one's not going to get hung up as much you can even throw it in a little bit of cover and um, 
because of the way the hook setup is, and you're going to jig or right click, bring your bait up, bring it back down, bring your bait up, bring it back down, and that's how you'd use that jig. So I didn't want to use a whole video on it, but that's the basics on how you're going to do it. So that should get you started. If you guys have any more questions, throw them in the comments below. You can throw them on Reddit. I've been pretty active on Reddit too. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next, what you want help with. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you.